hello my viewers and welcome back to my channel subscribe and remember to give this video a thumbs up by simply tapping on the like button and feel free to share your comments in the comment section down below now today's video takes us into a powerful conversation that we mostly talk about ws where palm color individuals confront the uncomfortable truth surrounding ws and artism by acknowledging the privilege inherent in not actively experiencing artism. Now, these individuals challenge the notion that ignoring or dismissing discussions about artism will make it disappear. So join me as we explore WP and the role it plays in perpetuating systemic inequalities. Through candid reflections and thought-provoking insights, this video offers a compelling examination of the impact of WS on individuals and society as a whole. So with that said, let's get into the videos and check out what these different people had to say about it because i have privilege i don't need to worry about getting into a job interview and having somebody look at my hair and telling me that i look ghetto i mean arguably i could you know not brush my hair but i will not experience the same type of pushback that somebody from the black community will get even when their hair is absolutely gorgeous meticulously taken care of there are people who do not understand hair in general and so in a job interview they will be and they won't think that they're they will think that they're simply you know expecting a certain standard but that certain standard is and that's why we need to talk about it do you know how many times i hear um but I was raised dirt poor. Name one privilege or benefit that I get. These are pictures of very poor people in the 30s and 40s. They were probably hard working also. The difference is that they were able to go into public spaces without being harassed. They were able to go to hotels, drink from fountains, get jobs in the spaces, not be these people, on the other hand, were just as poor. We all know that they were not given those same opportunities. One of the benefits that you get from your privilege is that you're able to ignore your privileges so that you can ignore other people's oppression. So if there was privilege, why was I always poor? His ideas about privilege are all over the place. At one point he said, if I had privilege, why did my mom, my dad, and my grandfather um, because we're not vampires. There's not immortality. But a lot of people ask, if I privilege, why was I poor? Why did I struggle? Because it doesn't mean you won't do those things. It just means you won't do those things because you are. Many groups have the same struggles you faced, plus others based solely on the color of their skin. And the fact that you don't experience those is privileged. In fact, you're so privileged you don't even realize those struggles exist. In one of his examples, he almost stumbles on the point. He says, if I'm standing with five black men and a police officer comes up, they assume I'm the one who's up to no good, completely missing the fact that they're saying you're guilty by association. If you're here, with the likes of them, you must be up to no good. And yet all of those men are seven and a half times more likely to be wrongfully convicted than you are. And the odds are even greater if the victim... Oh, and if all of you got popped for possession, they're 12 times more likely to be convicted on the possession than you are. How about we say all of you are applying for a mortgage to buy a home? You're more likely to be approved than they are. In fact, in 2021, an AI bias caused 80% of black mortgage applicants to be denied. And an AI isn't automatically biased, it has to be taught that. And it's not like someone sat down and typed B. It looked at the system already in place, it saw the bias that already exists, and it applied it itself. Now let's say you and all those guys get approved, get your homes, then a few years later, you all decide to sell in the same market. You will almost certainly get more money for your home than they will for theirs. Like this black family who had their home appraised and it came back being worth $472,000 and they thought that was low. So they had friends stand in as them, removed family photos, and the same house was appraised at being worth $750,000. And the examples go on and on. You don't have violent stereotypes associated with the color of your skin. You're more likely to be shown in a favorable light in the media, even if you've done something wrong. It isn't hard to find characters in books and movies and television that look and sound like you. But perhaps the greatest example of privilege is when we'll say, I think it would go away if we just stopped talking about it. Because for many, they're only exposed in media and conversation. They don't actively experience it. And not experiencing it is in itself a privilege. If a terrible thing is happening in the world and the only thing you have to do to remove it from your life is to change the channel, that is privilege. For all the people who don't think they have privilege, you do. I experienced it today. 
I would not if I was a black man in my situation. So in my state, if you have a concealed carry permit and a pit permit, it shows up on your driver's license and your registration, um, your, like your plates, if the cops run your plates when you get pulled over. I have those things. And I got pulled over today. Now, to explain the situation, it was a little funny. <laughs> Because I just jumped out of a lake in my area. You can jump into lakes anywhere and everywhere. And most of the roads home to my house were back roads. But there's this one section that's a main road. And as I was turning right off of the main road, there was a cop behind me who pulled me over. Because apparently I had a brake light out. Now, I just jumped out of a lake and I got all these wet clothes on. And normally I have a towel and a dress or a skirt or something to put on so that I don't have to sit in a wet bathing suit. But I don't because I've been uh, all over the place lately and I had emptied my van and I didn't have that. And, but I did have a wet bathing suit on and I was like, oh no. And I shimmied out of that into my car, in my car. And um, so I was just driving home in a shirt with <laughs> no pants on and so I see the lights go on behind me and I'm thinking oh fuck man I got no pants on <laughs> what do I do so I reach over into my console and there's this massive mondo bag filled with all god knows what this thing is heavy and it's massive like look at this thing so I grab it and I stick it in my lap and I know from the how difficult it is to you get your training that you put your hands on the wheel always have your hands on the wheel and don't move them when an officer comes up to your vehicle so I did that and he's like oh do you know why I pulled you over I was like no officer I don't <laughs> pretty sure you couldn't see I don't have pants on <laughs> Anyway, he tells me I have a brake light out and doesn't ask me for my license and registration because I would have to rifle through this Mondo bag and I have on my license. I didn't have to do that. I was like, oh, no, I didn't know that. I'll get that fixed on Monday. Thank you for letting me know with my hands on the wheels the whole time. And he let me go. Now, if I was a black man in a van with blacked out windows and when they ran my plates because they always run your plates when they pull you over in this state they would have been hyper vigilant and on the offense and perhaps would have got I today <laughs> privilege it is as simple as that driving around with no pants on with <laughs> on my license <laughs> did not get shot <laughs> now let me first start with something that really got my attention the notion that artism can simply disappear if we stop talking about it i'm struck by the profound disconnect between this assertion and the lived experiences of marginalized communities the idea that ignoring artism will somehow eradicate it fails to acknowledge the deep rooted systemic inequalities and injustices that continue to perpetuate racial discrimination. First and foremost, artism is not merely a topic for discussion. It is a pervasive reality that impacts every aspect of life for black people and people of color, from systemic barriers in education and employment to disparities in healthcare and criminal justice. Artism manifests in tangible ways that cannot be dismissed through silence or denial. So ignoring artism does not make it vanish. Rather, it allows it to foster and thrive unchecked, perpetuating circles of oppression and injustice. The notion that palm color people can simply opt out of conversations about artism reflects a position of privilege that many people of color and black people do not have. For those who directly experience artism on a daily basis, it is not a matter of choice, but a lived reality that cannot be ignored. Suggesting that artism would disappear if we stop talking about overlooks the voices of those who are most affected and undermines efforts to address systemic inequalities. Moreover, history has shown us that progress towards racial justice is not achieved through silence but through active engagement and advocacy. The civil rights movement, for example, 
was propelled by the voices and actions of black activists and allies who refused to remain silent in the face of injustice. By amplifying their voices and raising awareness about racial disparities, meaningful change was achieved. The idea that artisticism will cease to exist if we stop talking about it, it is not only false, but also harmful. True progress towards racial equality requires confronting the uncomfortable realities of artisticism, listening to the experiences of marginalized communities, and actively working towards dismantling systemic injustices. Artisticism operates not only through overt acts of discrimination, but also through implicit biases, institutional policies, and cultural norms that sustain racial hierarchies. So by ignoring or minimizing discussions about artisticism, society risks normalizing and perpetuating these harmful dynamics. Silence allows prejudice to go unchecked and prevents meaningful progress towards dismantling are to the cis structures and attitudes. It is through open dialogue, education, and awareness raising efforts that individuals and communities can begin to challenge and change deeply ingrained patterns of discrimination. The idea that artisticism will cease to exist if we stop talking about it overlooks the fact that artisticism is deeply ingrained in the fabric of society. It is embedded in institutions, systems, and ideologies that have been shaped by centuries of colonialism, slavery, and discrimination. So addressing artisticism requires more than just surface level conversations. It demands a commitment to structural change and systemic reform. The notion that artisticism will disappear if we stop talking about it, fails to recognize the power dynamics at play. Now, those who benefit from WP may feel discomfort or guilt when confronted with discussions about artisticism, leading them to advocate for silence as a means of preserving their own comfort and status quo. However, true progress towards racial justice requires challenging these power dynamics and amplifying the voices of those who have been marginalized and oppressed. Now, this notion fails to recognize the lived experiences of black people in other marginalized communities who face artisticism on a daily basis. For many individuals, artisticism is not just a topic for discussion. It is a harsh reality that shapes the interactions, opportunities, and sense of safety in the world. So ignoring artisticism does not make it vanish. It simply allows it to persist unchecked, perpetuating circles of discrimination and injustice. For black people, ignoring artisticism would mean turning a blind eye to countless instances of racial profiling, microaggressions, and systemic barriers that black people encounter in their everyday lives. It would mean accepting a status quo where black people's humanity is denied and their dignity is constantly under threat. The idea that artisticism can be eradicated through silence places the burden of addressing artisticism solely on the shoulders of those who are oppressed rather than on those who perpetuate it. By suggesting that black people should ignore the harsh treatment we face as black people, this narrative effectively absorbs society of its responsibility to confront and dismantle art the cyst attitudes and structures. Instead of ignoring artisticism, it is important that individuals and communities stand up against it and advocate for meaningful change. This requires not only acknowledging the existence of artisticism, but also actively challenging it in all its forms. It means amplifying the voices of those who are marginalized, advocating for policy reforms, and promoting education and awareness about the realities of artisticism. Artisticism is not just individual acts of prejudice. It is deeply ingrained in the structures and systems that govern our societies. From education and healthcare to housing and employment, racial disparities persist across multiple sectors, perpetuating inequality and injustice. For black people and other marginalized groups, ignoring artisticism is not an option. It's a matter of survival. The harsh treatments that black people face on a daily basis from racial profiling by law enforcement to discrimination in hiring and promotion cannot be ignored or brushed aside. To suggest otherwise is to trivialize the very real and often traumatic experiences of artisticism that black individuals and communities endure. The idea that artisticism will disappear if we stop talking about it overlooks the power dynamics at play. Artisticism is not just a problem of individual attitudes. It is a system of oppression that benefits some at the expense of others. By silencing discussions about artisticism, those in positions of privilege effectively maintain the status quo and perpetuate their own advantage. 
So ignoring artism does not address the root causes of racial inequality. It does not challenge the systemic barriers that prevent black people and other marginalized groups from accessing equal opportunities and achieving their full potential. To truly address artism, people must confront it head on, acknowledge it, its existence and work collectively to dismantle the structures and systems that uphold it. We have finally come to the end of the video. Share your thoughts on this. Thank you for watching and see you in my next video.